Hey, what's up guys, I'm Nizio Cole, and today I'm going to be reviewing episode 3 of Arrow season 8, Leap of Faith. Um, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it, nothing really else to say. So we already knew from the promo at the end of last episode that we were going back to Nandapar Bat, and also Oliver was talking about going back to Nandapar Bat and finding out who Marnavu is, who he really is. Also, before this video, just, you know, spoilers, crazy, say this at the start of every Arrow Rose video, spoilers, just you know watch the episode first and then come unless you like spoilers which I, I know some people do and it's pretty weird but anyways and uh yeah he meets up with thea they go on this quest um uh what, what was it the thanatos guild that i talked about like two episodes ago thanatos guild shows up they're like hey i don't like you you should lead us to the sword or whatever to be honest i wasn't really paying that close attention to the storyline but uh it was really interesting had some nice scenes and on the other side diggle and lila were out in uh i think it was kasnia it might have been either Kaznia or like Afghanistan or so somewhere over there in the Middle East. Uh, but they were rescuing these hostages, a mother and a son. Uh, and there was someone at the party that we recognize, Kalim Kadir's son, uh, which I, I think I believe he died in season three. I'm really bad at remembering things. But uh, yeah, he he died. Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad just offed him. And uh, yeah, his son is like, I, re I remember you. So that was a nice callback. The uh, in the episode's pretty cool. Honestly, if I were to describe any episode as a filler, it'd be this episode. Um, a little bit disappointed because there's not much I can say about it. Not a lot went on in the episode. Well, except for the end, but uh, we'll get to that. Uh, so, yeah, you know how I said I wouldn't really be talking about the future stuff? Well, I kind of have to now because future stuff is now just regular stuff because they time traveled right so uh zoe she got killed or presumably i don't know i don't know if she died or not but yeah i mean that would definitely kill you sword through the sword through the back oh that would hurt that would oh that would hurt and then right after that you know mia's crying um connor is beating up his brother yeah he's pissed that zoe's dead and yeah they see this blinding light uh same thing happens to oliver and presumably dinah and renee because they're also seen in the bunker uh, yeah, they just all get teleported to the bunker, 2019. Uh, so that's that's crazy. If I were to say anything about this episode, I, I hate you guys for that cliffhanger. The cliffhanger in this episode is ridiculous. The episode was was pretty mediocre. I give it like a six out of ten. But um, the cliffhanger just 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 made it. It was ridiculous. I I was like, you just, you can't end off on that. You can't end off on that. It's ridiculous. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to me? Like I said, there wasn't a lot of stuff to talk about in this episode because. It was pretty much just a filler episode, Diggle and Lila doing their thing, their little team up, uh, basically a, a, a two-person suicide squad, and Talia and Thea and the Thanatos Guild are doing their thing, getting the sword. Oh, also, I forgot to talk about the monitor is not a good guy. <laughs> uh, that said something about he's the one causing the crisis, and he's not the one trying to prevent it. Um, so kind of like... Uh, the way he worded it kind of made it seem like it was like a, a Thanos situation, like he's trying to restore balance to the universe, or the multiverse at that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, if you think about it, I don't know what they're going to do. Considering that Oliver doesn't know about Barry's sacrifice, and Barry doesn't know about Oliver's sacrifice, this is going to be really interesting when they meet up in Crisis. And that's just my opinion. Uh, also, it's going to be interesting to see how Renee deals with the death of his daughter. Well, not his daughter now, but his daughter from the future. But uh, yeah, Renee, Diggle, Oliver, they will do anything for their children, even Malcolm Merlin. Uh, anytime Thea's in trouble, he's there. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Malcolm Merlin showed up sometime in the later half of season eight or sometime during Crisis, uh, because you know, let's just face it: if you don't find a body, they're not—they're basically not dead. But uh, even if you do find a body with Arrow, even if you do find a body, they're basically not dead. Uh, Lazarus pits, which have been destroyed since then, uh, but time travel. If they needed to get Malcolm Merlin for some reason, they could get him right before his death and then put him right back. I mean, that's what they did with Snart in Season 3 of The Flash to break into Argus to steal that Dominator power source. So, um, yeah, nothing's really out of the question. Crisis is shaping up to be crazy. I heard something about Titans being on Crisis, like DC Universe Titans, which would be even more crazy. I wouldn't even be surprised if there were some animation, like... The Batman animated series, Young Justice, uh, Justice League animated from like 2001. I wouldn't be surprised, uh, just being completely honest, because this is shaping up to be one of the biggest comic book events of the year. I know Endgame happened, but honestly, in my opinion, Infinity War is better than Endgame. It, it was just, it was more grand. Let me get it straight. I love both movies, but I feel like Infinity War was just more, uh, it's something we had never really seen before. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this is going to be really innovative. Based on how all the seasons are going, I'm watching every show. Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, 
Black Lightning and Batwoman and uh, based on how they're shaping up Honestly, this looks like a really, really strong year, and it's one of the strongest that we've had in a while. If you think back uh, last year, uh, I, I really didn't enjoy the Flash season. Arrow was all right. It, you know, didn't really like the future stuff. Uh, Ricard, yes, yeah, stuff was was all right, but this year, I honestly, I'm, I can say that I'm enjoying every show. And while Batwoman did take a little bit getting used to, it does feel like it's getting its legs and it's actually becoming a proper CW show. The fight scenes feel more realistic and just everything about this year of DCCW shows just feels so much more better. I, I mean, that's all I can really say. Uh, but yeah, sorry for kind of rambling a little bit. I kind of had to make a video a little bit longer because there wasn't so much to talk about in this episode. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below your favorite part of the episode or any theories you may have about Crisis or Arrow Season 8. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.